intro ever. What is happening, everybody? Welcome back to another PJ Q&A. Thank you guys so much for giving this little series. It's such a good uh, and warm welcome. So, so I think we're just going to keep it. You guys can't get rid of me now. So I'm going to go ahead and answer a bunch of more questions on here. But first, I need to open up this thing right here. Y'all know what this is? My lifeline. So what I want to do is um, I'm actually going to start with some of the newer questions this week and if you guys have other questions ask them down below and then next week I'm going to pick some from that and from a previous video that had a bunch of questions on it that way like I said we're still working our way through all of these to get them answered for you. So this one comes from Odo, Odo01 it says Robert how do you train your pinky finger just keep using it or do you use your ring finger instead? Um, I actually use my pinky finger a lot but I also use my ring finger quite a bit. I, when I originally started playing um, I had a lot of people who were very strict about, you know, only pinky finger. So I'm, I'm really comfortable using my pinky, it doesn't really matter. Only time I really go like this. If I'm painting a bend, I like to bend with my ring finger. Um, it's just easier for me because I like to put my thumb over the neck to really grab the guitar neck to kind of control the vibrato. I use my pinky, I don't seem to have it. My pinky kind of puts my hand more um, parallel to the strings, I guess. I can do it. See, my finger kind of slips off the string. So I like to use, I've been with my ring finger a lot, or middle finger. You know? <laughs> yeah, as far as using my pinky, it's never been an issue. Uh, the way you kind of do it is honestly just by using it a lot. Um, you know, just when you're practicing your scales, make sure you're not going like this. Um, you know, some people do like, look, Doug Aldridge really doesn't use his pinky. Joe Bonamassa really doesn't use his pinky. Eric Johnson. So they're all amazing. Um, to me, I like using my pinky because it gives me some, some bigger stretches, you know, some, some larger intervals. Let me turn so you can see my hand a little better. But if you like want to do like a three note string pentatonic thing, you really need, you need to be able to use your pinky. Sounded like crap. Let's see. Yeah. All those things is all pinky. And that was all ring finger. Okay, the next one comes from uh, Joe Ziedman. He says, My question is, what is the best way to improve your playing the quickest without using the word start slow? Um, well, the, uh, to me, the ultimate way to kind of improve your playing, there's a few um, key factors involved. For one, it's, it's how much you practice, and uh, two, it's what you practice. Now, the speed is definitely important. I won't use the words. Go, not fast. And, um, y you know, you do need to watch a, a few different things. So, if you really want to hone in and, and, you know, and learn and get better quicker, uh, I made a video about this, and, and there's quite a few key things. I mean. I do think using a metronome is important, but the first step is learning the lick. We'll say it's a lick. We'll say it's this lick, you know? Very Paul Gilberty lick. Um, so if that's the lick, learn it with your fingers and, and like mentally learn it first before you ever approach a metronome. And then you kind of take into consideration, you know, what are the factors that are involved in this. As in like picking, am I picking it the best way possible? Am I using the right fingers? How much am I moving my fingers? Am I moving my pick? Uh, there's lots of ways that will, uh, you know, greatly increase your playing ability as you go versus if you just kind of like hammer through something. You know? There's no need to pick that hard. I used to be extremely heavy-handed, and a guitar teacher. I'm looking at the wrong thing. The guitar teacher 
uh, made me start picking softer. And the big thing it did is it made me play very relaxed. And I think that's so crucial as being very relaxed when you're playing because it's really hard to play fast whenever you're um, all, you know, tensed up. <laughs> Now, the, the last one of the new questions, and I'll go back to some of the old questions, is, Robert, I have a question for you. How do you handle practicing guitar when you are sick? Uh, do you try to get better as soon as possible so you can play and extend extended periods of time? Or do you force yourself to play even 10 or 15 minutes when you are sick? Um, honestly, when I'm sick, the last thing I want to do is play guitar. <laughs> you know, I kind of, like, I don't get sick. Well, my wife says I get sick all the time, but I really don't. I get sick, like, once or twice a year, like, really sick. And, um, trust me, there is no guitar playing going on. It really sucks because you come back to playing guitar and you just feel like you've lost so much. But then within a few days, it's, it's right back to where it was. And a lot of times, I sometimes I feel like I'm, I'm even playing better than what I was before. Um, it's kind of like the whole like Yngwie Malmsteen thing where he got in that car accident and really couldn't play for a year. And when he came back, his playing was actually better and cleaner than what it was before. So, um, yeah, I, I really just don't try to do anything when I'm sick. My main focus is kind of what you said. Focus on getting better because I want to, you know, be feeling well and being inspired for the guitar. I never, um, I never make myself practice the guitar, I just, I want to. You know, I have a desire to all the time, so, uh, you know, that was never an issue of me. I was, you know, just get, get better, focus on that, then get back to playing guitar. So, that was always my goal. <laughs> Here's one from Joe Ziedman. I might ask answered one of your questions earlier. <laughs> you might have got two questions in this video. He says, how long did it take you to get your YouTube channel going? Um, it actually took quite a while. I really wasn't serious about YouTube for a long time. So if you look at my YouTube channel, I told you like when you started your channel. I started the channel like in 2006, but I didn't like do anything. That was just because you needed to create an account to watch videos. And um, I think it was in 2012, I think was when I really decided to get serious. I had posted some videos, you know, randomly, like, in 2010 I posted, like, two videos. In 2011 I posted, like, five videos. And it was in 2012 I was like, oh, you know, this is kind of cool. I really want to get going on it. So, it took a while, and, you know, it, it's really almost discouraging at first because you're posting all these videos, you're putting a lot of work into it, and you'll get, you know, like, 20 views on a video. But, I remember when I finally hit 100 subscribers, I was like so pumped up to hit 100. I was like, 100 people subscribed to my channel! You know, it's like so like excited about it. And um, I knew that it was just something I wanted to keep doing. So from that point on, it, it wasn't, um, even though like I, I celebrate, you know, occasions of hitting, you know, these milestones and stuff like that, it's never been about the numbers to me. It's like I've just, I've enjoyed doing it. I went to school for media, which was like video editing and, and photography and stuff like that. So this was just like using something I was already kind of passionate about, aside from just playing the guitar, but then it's playing guitar at the same time. So it's like two of the things I love the most, like video production, editing, and then uh, playing guitar, all put into one. So it's just something I like. So even when I wasn't getting any views, any subscribers, I was still posting videos every week and just creating content. And I think that's a big thing, is to get your channel going, you just have to start creating content, you know? Um, I always compare it to being like a like a superstore, like a, like a grocery store. So if you go to a grocery store and they only have five items on the shelf, odds are they might not have what you want. But if you just keep, you know, thinking of new ideas, creating content, lessons, uh, cover songs, all this stuff, you know, there's a lot of content out there for people to view. So I think, you know, just keep creating content. And uh, one thing I've always done is I, I strive to improve my content. So like one of the big things this year, that I've already done was I bought a new camera lens. So, like you guys have commented on, this is a wide angle lens, so I, the camera is very close to me, like I can literally touch the camera. And um, I think you guys get more of the room in the shot. It's just more of everything. So, uh, you know, you just have to be willing and wanting to constantly improve to have better video quality, better stuff like that, and just, um, you know, enjoy it most of all. Okay, the final one of the day will be Fernando Aragon. If, if your name is pronounced Aragon, I'm totally jealous. Uh, huge Lord of the Rings fan. Uh, anyway, so what is your favorite rock band? My favorite rock band would have to be...
hardcore imitation of Eruption, but Van Halen is hands down my favorite rock band ever. Probably followed by, um, probably has to be followed by Led Zeppelin. I mean, it's just such a riff mecha center with both of them, you know. <laughs> Just, I've, I've never seen two bands, for me personally, that's just like, I could learn every riff and be like totally happy with it. Uh, Van Halen riffs are insane to learn, the, the groove and rhythm. Same with Jimmy Page riffs, I mean... So many... middle so yes yeah, my favorite band is Van Halen I just played like 10 Led Zeppelin riffs that's the way you do it so other than that guys if you have questions ask them down below if you would please click that subscribe button and I'll see you next Wednesday with another Q&A yeah Woo.